Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth episode in this series where I chat to a guest about coding. So just a bit of background on today's guest. Um, Nick and I met in Barcelona. Uh, we studied together and we also worked together on the FC Barcelona thesis. Um, Nick, would you like to briefly introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Nicholas. I'm originally from Berlin, Germany. I'm now living in Malaga and kind of a mix of software developer and data scientist, I would say. Um, okay, so let's start from the beginning. How did you discover coding? How did you start learning how to code? I wouldn't even say I really discovered coding. I basically was very much interested in doing something in the area of sports. So I originally wanted to do something like sports management, but then realized you know, sports analytics would be something really cool to study. I basically came from the stats point of view. I, I, I studied economics, didn't enjoy it that much, but the stats classes I did enjoy. And then trying to combine that with, with sports, I found sports analytics, then found data science, and through data science I learned how to code. Nice. So why do you like coding? What's most fun to you about coding? I would say in general it's just very rewarding. It's it's quite difficult, but it also like very often you just don't even realize that you're spending hours on something just because it is actually really enjoyable. It is quite tough to learn, but when you when you get past that point, like I said, it's just um it's just really rewarding. I would also say that, you know, one of the key things that I always say, or one of the main reasons why I also went from data science into more like doing web development stuff, or why I was initially interested in web development, was because I love the idea of being able to have an idea in your head and then turning it into something real, or, I mean, digitally real, but still you can turn something into a product um, quite quickly and you can share it with friends and it's Similar in that sense, maybe a little bit too art, where you also might have an idea of like what you want to what you want to paint or what you want to write, um, and then you can bring something that is that just exists in your head into sort of the real the real world. Oh, wow, that's really interesting. Um, so, why are you able to build more things with web development rather than data science? Well, I think in data science, you pretty much always have to rely on the data and that there's something there. Um, you can't just go or most data scientists, at least, I would say, can't just go and say, oh, I'm going to build this sort of application myself. Python, for example, is mainly like a backend language. Like, you can't build things that I can now show to you um, and have, like, full control over how that is in the browser. There are obviously some solutions where you can do that, but it's not really the right language to, to build um, products or to build websites or anything like that. So with data science, I was a little bit frustrated that I would sometimes feel like, oh, I have a good idea and I know how to code, but I can't really turn that into something, um, into like a whole, into a whole product, which on the other hand, if you learn JavaScript, right, you can, you can do something on the front end, you can do something in the back end, and you can basically combine all of that into one, um, into one product, which is just a little bit different from data science. And on top of that, on data science, you always sort of rely on the data to be good as well. Like I, for example, now that I'm freelancing, I mean, we haven't talked about it yet, but now that I'm freelancing, I realize that with web development, you sort of know like, okay, I'm going from this place to this place to this place. Maybe it's potentially a little bit less creative, the job of, of a web developer than it is the, the job of a data scientist. Less creative. Yeah, I would say like, as a data scientist, you have to figure out like what you're looking for and you have to be curious and keep continuing digging into the data. While in web development, or at least the way that I work with it, it's usually there's a designer that tells you this is how the site should look like. And then you're just building the components yourself. So the design side of things is done and you just go one by one by one. And it's more like, to me, it feels more like craftsmanship. Like you have to do it properly so that the website works at the end. But it's less of a creative process. It's more like problem solving. Um, while data science, on the other hand, is also problem solving. But you, have to, you don't know where you're going with it. And for some reason, I like the web development part of it at the moment a bit more. Nice. Um, so you've already touched a little bit on um, what you do. Would you like to expand on that a bit more? Like, what is it exactly that you do? And you get to code a lot for work. Yeah. So at the moment, I'm I'm splitting my time that I'm doing. I mean, generally, I'm currently sort of freelancing. I basically have my own agency now here in Malaga. It's mainly me, right? I'm I'm mainly the person working on all the projects. But sometimes we do work with other freelancers and stuff like that. So. It's kind of a mix between agency and just um, good old freelancing. 
But I'm splitting my time right now mainly between teaching and coding. So none of my projects are kind of consulting, although that sort of plays into it because you often are going to work with people that are not super technical. So you will have to explain solutions to them and you will also have to figure out like, you know, what does a business actually need? So there is definitely like a consulting aspect to it. But my main part when I work with clients is coding. On the other hand, I also teach, right? So that's, I would say at the moment or the last few months was basically a 50-50 split. I usually try to code more than I teach because I always feel that if you work on real world problems or real world projects, it's way easier to go back into the classroom and teach people. While on the other hand, if you only teach, it's very hard to um, it's very hard to show real world examples. Even if you show, even, even if you teach basic things, it, it always helps if you're like, oh look, I actually coded something up here, and then the students can see in like a real world project how even like the small bits that we're teaching would go into like a bigger to a bigger project. That's really cool. Um, so you must be giving your students a lot of tips and advice regularly. Do you have any tips and advice to share um, with people who are starting out their coding journey? Yeah. I think everybody is, is different, right? There's not going to be like a silver bullet um, that's going to help everybody. The main thing, though, that I would always tell students or that, that we see because I'm teaching at, at a boot camp, right? So it's it's very intense. Um, and it's over a few weeks, people are trying to learn how to code. And a lot of people are absolutely frustrated with the process as well, because learning is just tough. Like at the moment, I'm learning also a bit of mobile development, which is just completely out of, out of everything I've done before, sort of. And it's just difficult. And it also puts, it, it makes me realize how difficult the learning process is again, right? Because now when you're like more advanced, you... It's, it doesn't feel necessarily the same, uh, the same difficulty level. So I would just say for everybody, you know, it, it, for everybody, it feels this way. Like if you start out with it and you're actually really interested in coding, stick with it. And the first few weeks are not predictive of like how good of a coder you're going to be. You might really, you might really have the feeling at the beginning you suck and nothing makes sense. And that feeling probably continues for like a few months until you feel like some kind of level of competency where you're like, okay, this, this now starts to make sense. But as long as you're enjoying sort of the process, or as long as you are really interested in working with computers every day, all day, which is not not all day, but I'm saying like 40 hours a week. If you can see yourself in that, just stick with it. There's nobody, you know, I've taught now, I don't know, probably over 200 students. And I don't think there was one where I was like, oh, this person is too stupid to learn how to code. Like it, it is difficult. It requires a lot of time, but it's not rocket science. Um, in that sense, you can, you can all learn it, I would say. You just have to stick with it. And that's, I think, the toughest bit at the beginning. I agree. Um, and bonus question, actually. So you're a freelancer. And for the more advanced coders out there, um, do you have any advice for people wanting to go into freelancing? So maybe they've worked at a company for a while, but now they want to set up their own agency or they want to be able to just code on different contracts for different clients. How would you get started um, freelancing with coding? Yeah, that's, I mean, it's a really good question. The problem is that I always feel like it's kind of dangerous to answer these things because for me, when I talk about it, it sounds kind of easy but just because I do really think that I was really lucky with it like I was at the time in a working situation where I wasn't really happy so it was kind of for me that I wanted to just do something new and I always wanted to do freelancing but I didn't have any clients at the time so I pretty much just quit and said okay now I'm a freelancer which already helps you know quite a lot like I would say if you're if you are a more advanced or more experienced um, developer or data scientist right you have a very specific or very strongly specialized skill which not a lot of people have so even if you have like a network of i don't know 200 300 people on linkedin right and then you go and and like those people or for me for, for example it was mostly like closer friends that needed somebody because you do again have a very specialized skill that a lot of people around you might need which means that my experience is there are people around you that need websites to be built for example or that need to have automated processes in their in their companies so it already helps to say, or at least it, it helped me to say, hey, I'm a freelancer now. And suddenly people around me were like, oh, here's maybe something for you. Here's something for you. Because they won't know a lot of freelance developers, right? Having said that, I'm not suggesting anybody to, you know, who's kind of toying around with the idea of going freelance to just do it. Because just because it worked for me doesn't mean that it works for everybody else. Because it was just in that moment happened to be that I was lucky enough that I had people around me that needed, you know, websites done and stuff like that. 
So I would say I, I got really lucky. So I feel a bit, um, I'm very cautious about giving advice on that because just because it worked out for me the right way or in a good way doesn't mean that it would work the same way. Because my approach was basically just, okay, I quit and then I see, uh, then I see what happens. I would say, however, if you're in a situation that is, you know, where you're just unhappy, it's, it might still be the right choice, right? Even if freelancing wouldn't have worked out for me, I would have still made, you know, very good experiences um, with it, right? And I would have needed, I would have had the time to learn more and to, to do more, right? I was even planning like, okay, I have now enough money in the bank for doing this for six months. If I don't get any clients, at least I have six months of just concentrated learning and then I just find a job afterwards, right? So if you have a plan and you feel like the current situation is not working, you know, maybe learning how to code or learning or just trying to go freelance might be an option. But otherwise, I don't want to be the person that tells people just go freelance without any clients and stuff, because I think that can also be a recipe for disaster. Yeah, I think, yeah, it depends on the person and um, the environment they're in or maybe the job market and stuff and potential clients. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Nick, for your time today thank and you. all your valuable insights. Um, this is really interesting. So thank you for sharing that with everyone. Thank you. <laughs>